Next week, there's no telling what we might do. There's just no telling. I'm thinking about uh, riding a horse and, and wagon to church. Does anybody have one? By the way, you got a goat wagon, anything. We'll try it. <laughs> right. This morning, I've got a little different uh, twist to the message for you, and so many people pay extra for this uh, lesson. It's called Anger Management Class. Anger Management. And we all need it. Go ahead and shake your little heads that minute right there, amen. We all need it from time to time. We've got to have a little anger management uh, class. And here we are in the Word of God today. We find that the disciples, uh, they're indignant. They are having, uh, they're, they're, uh, it, they have indignation or much anger. And usually that word, I looked it up in the Bible, the many times it's used in the Bible, only is it reserved for the Lord to rain down wrath on a, a people, a nation, uh, usually it denotes the judgment of God, usually at the end of the era or the end of the age. Uh, we know it's coming soon. And by the way, uh, me and you as saved individuals, uh, we don't have to look forward to that prospect, amen. We're going to be taken out of here real soon. I think Jesus is coming soon, don't you? Today, Jesus had gone to the house of Simon the leper. Now, leprosy was a terrible disease. I want you to know that most people would have not gone to this house of Simon the leper because it was very contagious. Uh, people who had leprosy would just have to, you know, identify themselves as being unclean. They did not want to get near people because it, it's a terrible disease. It eats the flesh off your skeleton. It's terrible. It's terrible. So nobody wanted it. But you notice where Jesus was at? He went right to it. Let me ask a question this morning. Do you think Jesus could heal this man of leprosy? Yes. You think maybe that's what he was doing there? Hey, think about the worst thing that's going on in your life today. You think Jesus could heal that problem in just a split, instantaneous second? Sure he can. God has all power. Jesus has all power. But the very deliverer who, who himself is the great healer, the great savior of every problem that we have. Notice, I find in all the scriptures, I can't find where Simon was healed. Now let me tell you who Simon was. Simon the leper, from my studies this week, I found out that he was Judas Iscariot's own father. Judas Iscariot's father could have been healed had it not been for the behavior of Judas Iscariot himself. Because Judas started something going on here, a little anger problem, a little indignation problem between the disciples, and he started it, but all of them got involved in it, and it kept his own father from being healed. I believe that's why Jesus went to that house that day. I wonder how many things are held up in our life because we have the wrong spirit or we have uh, the wrong attitude or our behavior, like Judas, is not what it ought to be. You see, anger causes our behavior to be less than it should be. Everybody knows what a Christian should be. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. But the thought is this morning, is it what it ought to be in your life today? I want to read you a few verses about anger in people's life. In James 1 and 20, the Bible says, For the wrath or anger of man worketh not the righteousness of God. In other words, just like in Judas' case, what was going on there was so su supernatural. It was so amazing that Jesus would have even come to the house. You understand that? And he came for one reason. But the anger of Judas and the disciples, let's include all of them, kept... Jesus from performing the miracle because the wrath of man boycotts or votes against the righteousness of God. The wrath of man, the scripture says, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. That's what it says, James 1 and 20. Proverbs 29 and 18. Scornful men bring into a city a snare, but wise men turn away from wrath. I was reading 29 of Proverbs this morning and I wrote that down. 
a wise man will turn away from wrath. Why? Because wrath stirs our heart up. Anger uh, gets us all uh, involved and it gets us all emotional and, and it causes us to, to lose our focus. And what is our focus and what should be our focus? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and his work in this world. Proverbs 29 and 22, I found another verse on anger in our very Proverbs 29 this morning. Does everybody read a proverb a day? Is everybody still reading the Bible in here? All right, we're Bible believers, right? Here's what the Bible says about anger. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man abideth in transgression. In other words, we've gone past sin when we are involved in anger. We let our anger turn to fury, okay? A furious man, according to Scripture, abideth or is right now in the middle of He's right in the middle of what God says is not only a sin, but is a transgression. Job 10 and 17, this is what Job, the oldest uh, book in the Bible, says about anger. Notice it says, Thy renewest thy witnesses against me, and increaseth thine indignation upon me. Changes and war are against me. He goes on to say in later, the next verse, he said, I wish that I had never been born. All of this conflict, all of this war, all of this anger, all of this indignation has turned everyone against me. And he's saying, is it necessary? Is this a necessary ingredient for the Christian's life? Then we look over in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number uh, 32. Let's turn over there because I find it to be one of the major trumpet blasts in the scriptures. And I find it to be very helpful, uh, not hurtful. Amen. Anger only hurts. Amen. But we know love helps. Somebody help me up here this morning. Ephesians chapter number 4 and verse number 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Grace for our lips, Lord. Let our lips speak of thy wondrous works. Amen. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Notice holiness. Uh, without it, no man shall see God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. In other words, our relationships with one another, our behavior, our attitude towards other people, let it be right. And then it goes on to say, here's verse 32, you need to hang this up in your house and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Isn't that good? That's so good. Don't you, look, hey, how about Wednesday night when we saw Dr. Banwell? Wasn't that good? Our missionary uh, over in India, wasn't it wonderful to hear the report he had? Did he not give it with love? Did you not sense the, the meek spirit by which he spoke? Why? Because, you know why? He laid all that stuff down. He let it go. He could not have gotten up here. I asked him, I said, Brother Banwell, do you always have the liberty that you had uh, last night to preach when you go into churches? And he said, and I quote, and I listen closely. He said, Pastor, sometimes it's not very easy to speak. Matter of fact, he said, sometimes I can't even speak a word. What is that? That's grieving the Holy Spirit. Someone is grieving God. Someone hasn't laid down their wrath. Someone hasn't laid down their malice. Someone hasn't laid down uh, their evil thinking or speaking towards one another. And thus, you know what happens? Just in Judas's eye, just as in Judas's life, he got the whole group of disciples all stirred up. The Bible says there was great indignation. There was great wrath. I want to speak on anger, anger management class. We may need an angel before it's over. <laughs> Amen. I know one angel defeated 185,000 Syrians. By the way, Syria's in the news. Pray for one angel. Amen. The Christians over there need deliverance, don't they? Over 100,000 of them have given their life. Our missionary, uh, Brother Baruti, sends me emails constantly, two or three a week, and the beheadings. And, and all. If, if you could read what I'm reading, you would just, unbelievable. It's unbelievable what's going on over there. How is this happening, Pastor? Hatred, wrath, indignation, variance against brother, against brother. All these things the Lord said would go on in the last days. 
And God's cause is the one that suffers on account of it. I did, did hear from Brother John Nelms, though, and this is what he said. He said, countries that he cannot name, they are smuggling in Bibles by camel's back. And they're going with the New Testaments. They're going with the John and Romans, and they're giving them to hundreds of thousands of Muslim people so they can hear the word of God and be saved. When we think that God is dead and God is not alive and that God is asleep somewhere up in heaven and he has Alzheimer's disease and he don't really know what's going on between the nations and he doesn't really know what's going on between our neighbors and between our families. God knows all things. And he's able to touch the situation. What does the world need? What does that 1040 window need? I'll tell you what they need. They need the Lord. They need Jesus Christ. They need to be saved. You say, preacher, what do I need if constantly I have hatred and I have wrath and I have ill will towards my neighbor? You may need to be saved. You know, when Jesus comes in, the devil moves out. Number one this morning, it all started with one man, Judas. The anger was spread to another man. I want to say, number one, the argument was made that it could have been used on the poor. Uh -huh. Talking about this alabaster box full of ointment. It was worth 300 pence. I looked it up and the 300 pence, are you listening, was one year's salary. One whole year's salary was used on the Lord's feet to anoint his body and Jesus said she has done it for my burial. In other words, and all of you disciples, all of you men folk have missed it. This one lady knew what was about to happen. He was going to give his life. But before he gave his life, she wanted to give something very costly to the body of Jesus Christ to be anointed before he went to the cross. She wanted to bless him. She wanted to anoint him. She wanted to give everything that she had to Jesus Christ. She was a sold out servant of Jesus Christ. Her name is mentioned in the Bible in another passage. Her name was Mary of Bethany. Hold your horses. Jesus said everywhere you go that you preach the gospel that I have given to you, that her name will be given as a memorial for her because she had reverence for me. She took time out for me. She gave to my body to be anointed for my burial. Is that not an amazing story? Every nation on earth has heard about this sweet woman who loved God with all of her heart. Ladies, at that ladies' conference, you learned about how that ladies give their life also to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just us men. Us men need some help. We're shy. Amen. A few French fries. Shy of a, of a happy meal sometimes. Amen. <laughs> we don't understand what's going on. But thank God for you ladies. Thank God. God has raised you up. This man, Judas, he said, we could have given this money to the poor. In John chapter 12, if you read the companion gospel of this gospel, Matthew 26, you'll find out where Jesus rebuked him even sharper in that passage that Matthew did not reference. And he said he did not do it. He did not want it for the poor, but that he was a thief. Judas was the one holding the bag. Judas was the one holding the money. Brother Barker, he wanted it for himself. See, we don't know the, the, the hidden mindset and, and we don't know the secret motives and we don't know the, the hidden agendas of people. But may I include you in this morning? Jesus knows every motive. Jesus knows every thought, every imagination. Amen. He knows it all. And he said Judas was of the devil from the beginning. He was a thief. According to 1 Corinthians 6 and 10, you'll find it there that any extortioner or thief will have their place, not in the kingdom of God, but somewhere different. You'll find it there. 
Amen. If you, if you have that lifestyle of taking things that don't belong to you, can I tell you that Jesus called him a thief and he cared not for the poor and that's exactly who he was. That was exactly the mission that he was on. Even though he followed the Lord for three and one half years, his heart was not in it. He was a preacher, but his heart was not in it. He performed miracles, but his heart was not in it. Hey, just because people uh, perform miracles, that does not mean that they are a follower of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter number 7, it says it this way. Many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, we have done many wonderful things in thy name. And in thy name have we cast out devils and demons. And Jesus will say unto them, depart from me. I never knew you, ye workers of iniquity. Not that I once knew you and now I... I don't know you. No, I never knew. You were never one of my children. Judas was never one of the children of God. Judas started something in that discipleship, that disciple group, my friend, that would stop the miracle of Jesus Christ. It would stop the power of God on Simon the leper. Why? Because they had money marks in their eyes. They were arguing. They were mad. They were very worked up about it. Now, after the raising of Lazarus from the dead, now look, this was a high time for Jesus. This was, look, the whole world understood that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. From that day forward, the Bible says that the Pharisees sought to kill him. But not only did Jesus have problems outside the camp with the Pharisees, he had problems inside the camp with disciples and Judas who was leading the pack and making these accusations and questions and saying, this is a great waste. Jesus is allowing this woman to waste this money on himself, on his body. Can I tell you, Jesus has never made one mistake. When he allowed this woman to apply this ointment to his body, it was allowed by Jesus because it was right to do. He said, the poor you have with you always, but you don't have me with you always. He was going to the Father. If she wants to anoint my potty, if she wants to bless my potty, then let her go ahead. Did you know today the Lord's body is the church of Jesus Christ? Yes. And when you come into this church and when you come in the spirit of the Lord, you've come to bless Jesus' body. You've come to bless the name of Jesus and take the name of Jesus with you as you leave this building. So we see, first of all, we see that the argument was made that it could have been made and given to the poor. There was anger present there, amen? I think that they set the 33 uh, the 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. Just after this, Judas sold Jesus out for the price of a slave. Jesus went to the cross for every human being upon this planet. He, was, he, he can save, yea, even to the uttermost, to all those that come to him by faith. That's what the Bible says. How about even those in slavery today? Did you know there's people enslaved in their sins this morning? But Jesus was sold for the price of a slave so that he could take your place and he could take my place. He could take the man's place on drugs. He could take the man's place on alcohol. He could take the man's place that was totally given over to the devil. Jesus can set you free this morning. I will say secondly, they troubled the woman. They took their anger out on this innocent woman. Oh, my friend, Many folk, can I speak to you just a moment? Usually this is where our anger is turned towards, is the innocent, the women and the children. The little innocent children are the ones who have to suffer because of our anger, because of our uh, boiling over with this anger inside. This is anger management class 101. Is it okay? Can we talk about it? Can I ask you, if you have an anger problem, if you have a blood pressure problem, go to the doctor. Is that okay? You may have a physical problem, maybe because your face gets red and you get angry. It may be that you're Scotch-Irish like your pastor and your face gets red anyway. Maybe you're just a redneck, I don't know. You'll get that later on. Scratch that from the video. But usually this is where your anger is taken out. 
If you have an anger problem, can I tell you, before you take it out on these precious ladies and these sweet little innocent children, go out and hit a pine tree with your fist. And butt your head up against it while you're at it. You rascal. Amen. How many agree Judas was a rascal? He was thwarting and aborting the will of God for him and the disciples. Hey, go to the battered women's homes around the country and you'll see what I see. There's women there who have been the recipient of someone's anger. It's not a fun place to go to. It's not a fun thing to do to have to talk to someone and counsel someone who's gone through an intense, violent uh, activity against them and they're so afraid they don't even want to sleep at night. It's a terrible thing to have to go through. Oh, God help us this morning. God help us to get right with God and to get right with people. You can't get right with God if you're not right with the people that you live with down here. This anger problem. This violence that we see all around. By the way, that's why the Lord destroyed the earth the first time was because of violence and anger. It was corrupt. And even the heart of man was evil continually, the scripture says. And he says, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. That's why I know Jesus is coming real soon. Why? I'll tell you why. Because there's too much anger in the world. Too much, uh, too, much, too much fighting and not enough praying. Amen. You get right with God, you'll hug your brother's neck. Amen. Praise the Lord. Walk in the Spirit. Walk with God. Often we trouble Jesus in his body today like this woman was being troubled. We're angry. For whatever reason, we're angry. Go ahead and admit it. We get angry. Amen. We get angry. Let me tell you who, who that anger is really about. When you get angry like this and you're, you're just totally eat up with something in your life and totally consumed with a problem, let me tell you who you're angry at. Let me just fill you in. You're angry at God. And you're taking it out on his body. Amen. Just like those people who hung Jesus Christ on the cross, they were taking their anger out on Jesus. They wanted to hang him on a cross. They wanted to crucify him. They wanted to spit in his face. They wanted to mock him. They wanted to pull his beard out. They wanted to whip him with a cat of nine tails. They wanted to do everything they could do against this one who had never done any wrong. Let me tell you why, my friend. Because they were angry at God. And God allowed Jesus Christ to take my beating that I should have had and your beating that you should have had and my hell that I would have experienced save the grace and the love of Jesus Christ. They trouble this woman. They would trouble Jesus. They trouble this woman. She was, if you will, she was at his feet. And that's the question today. Are we angry at anyone? Are we mad at anyone? Do we take things out on people? Here's what we need to do. We need to pray for people. I say we need to pray for them. We don't need to mistreat people now. When we mistreat people, we mistreat his body. Christ's body is being tortured again today. He's already done it once. Let's not have him to have to go back through it again. In Hebrews chapter number 6, you'll find there, if we could lose our salvation, it says that Jesus would have to come back again, all over again, and be, uh, be placed to an open shame again and crucified again because of our sins if we could lose our salvation. But thank God, once for all, O oh brother, believe it. Once for all, O oh sinner, receive it. Cling to the cross, your burden he'll bear. Christ has redeemed us once for all. He don't want to be shamed again. He don't want to be spit on again. He don't want to be speared in the side again by the Roman guard. But yet, my friend, when we take it out on God's body, his church, his bride, we're mocking God. We're blaspheming God. Oh, my friend, pray that we don't mistreat anyone. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6, seeing that it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Talking to the church at Corinth, or talking to the church at Thessalonica, there were those that were troubling them as this lady by the name of Mary was troubled by the disciples because of their anger. God said it's a righteous thing for him to recompense tribulation upon those who are troubling you. 
Look, the disciples thought it was a great waste for that ointment to be wasted. They, they said it was a waste on Jesus Christ. Anything done for Jesus Christ is not a waste. Right. Amen. It is not a waste. It is a blessing. A special blessing. What am I saying? Let me get it down to where we meet this morning. Hey, don't think that any of the offerings that are collected in this church or any other church is a waste. Don't think that that missionary offering that we took up Wednesday night for our missionary is a waste. It's not a waste. It's blessing the body of Christ somewhere in this world. The local body of believers, that is. Hey, don't think that it's a waste that the buses are running all over this city, seven of them this morning picking up little children to come to Sunday school. That's not a waste. Judas would think so. How about you? Don't think that the pastor and his associates are a waste. They're a gift to this church, the body of Christ. Don't think that Sunday school teachers, don't think that the, the Christian school teachers are a waste and we don't need a Christian school anymore. No, my friend, it was given to the church. It's a gift to the church to educate our children. It's not a waste. Hey, don't think that uh, the uh, soul winning time on Wednesday night is a waste. It's not a waste. It's a gift to Jesus. It's a blessing to Jesus. It's a gift to anoint the body of Christ to add more to this local body of believers. Amen? Amen? Hey, that's what Judas thought, that it was a waste. And Jesus said, in essence, this is my body. It will not be here for much longer. Bless it. Let her bless my body. Let her anoint my body. Let her give to my body all she wants to give. It's hers to give. Let her give. And that's what Jesus says today. Hey, the early disciples had, if you will, I, I thought about this. We're going to have the same thing on October the 27th. We're going to have a give it all Sunday. What is that, Pastor? Well, we normally bring 10% to God's house every Sunday. On October the 27th, I'm making giving you for enough warning to let you know we're not bringing 10%. I'm, I'm trying to allow you to understand, to arrange your finances in such a way where you can understand we're not bringing 10% on that day. We're bringing 100%. We're wanting to say to Jesus, Lord, yes, we're going to keep up our 10%, but on that day, whatever salary is made that week, Lord, we're going to give that to you. You're worthy of it. Your church during the summer, your body during the summer got behind. We had to borrow $8,000. Am I right, Brother Pete? On a personal note, because we didn't have the money, because people weren't giving. And, and, and we're going to do like the early church did. They gave it all. By the way, we're probably sitting in here today because the early church gave everything they had. There's only two that did not give. They said they were going to give. That was the problem. And they promised that they would, and they did. Holy Spirit told them to give, and they lied to the Holy Ghost. They said to the Holy Ghost they would give, and they did not give. They didn't say to the preachers that they would give. They said to the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit convicted them to do such a thing. And yet Ananias and Sapphira, in the Give It All Sunday, promised the Lord in their heart that they would give, and not just 10%, they would give the 100% to the Lord that week. Can, you, can anybody ever... Ever, ever read through that verse? Can anybody tell me what happened to those two people that promised the Lord they would in their heart and they didn't do it? God took them. They had to drag them out. They had to drag them out of the church. That's not Old Testament, by the way. That's not under law. This was the church age. It was during the New Testament era. Did you find that to be the case? And they were picking up a large offering there. People were selling their lands. People were uh, dispersing things uh, to, to get rid of them so that they could give to the house of God. I don't know how you can come up with that money that Sunday on October 27th. I don't care if you have to sell things. I don't care if you have to liquidate things. Folks, the church, his body is in need. And it's never a waste to give to the body of Christ. It blesses our Lord. I don't want to struggle, do you? I don't want this church to struggle, do you? This church ought to have better uh, finances and we ought to be sitting prettier than any organization or any club or any group, any bank in this town. We ought to be high and dry. Amen. We ought to be blessed. Why? Because this is his body. You 
can be assured of the fact that there's not one dime that's ever been given to this church that was not used to try to win someone to Christ or to get those dear people discipled and baptized. You got my word on that. Amen. Now what's the thought? The thought is this. If God prompts you to participate to help our church that's in need from the terrible summer drought that we had financially, don't get angry. Anger management class. Don't say brick or bracker, brick or bracker all the way home. That preacher, that's all he's preaching. Money. Well, there's two things that God needs. He needs manpower and he needs money. And I'm not going to apologize for making that statement. And you can do both. This last week, we had two men of our church that saw a need out in front of our church, and they saw it was a physical need, and they said, we can do that, Pastor. We can pretty up the grounds. And they did. Can I say to Brother Jerry and Brother Kenneth, it looks great. Can I say to you, the rest of the church, we may not be physically able to do what they did, but we can give of our income. We can bless the Lord's body. We can be a blessing to Jesus' body today. I don't want to put a stripe on the back of my Lord. I don't want to cause shame to the body of Jesus Christ and his testimony. Do you? I want to be a blessing like Mary was. Mary was a spiritual woman. Now, it's going to take a spiritual person to get involved in this. If you fuss and gripe and carry on and get angry every time past, and, and you say this, and somebody might add and say, Preacher, we give to this and everything coming along. But inside, there's something going on in your heart. You don't want to do it. Can I say, it's going to take a spiritual person to get involved in this offering on October 27th. A spiritual man, a spiritual woman. And ladies, you can get involved too. Amen? Lastly, and I want to say it, notice the lady poured it out on the Lord's body. This lady, again, would never be forgotten, Mary of Bethany. Would be remembered everywhere the gospel would be preached simply because she gave it all. She had a give it all Sunday. Amen? She didn't say as Judas in the present, the previous verses here, she, he said this, what will you give me to the, to the scribes and the chief priests? He said, what would you give me in exchange for Jesus? They negotiated 30 pieces of silver. She, she didn't say that. What can I get? She said, what can I give to him, not what can I take from him? Isn't that good? Huh. She, she did not have anger <clears throat> like Judas did. What are they doing? What are they? They're, they're wasting it. Quit doing that. You ever seen anybody get mad? They're supposed to be Christians. Oh, look, she didn't have anger. She was down at the feet of Jesus. I said she was worshiping at the feet of Jesus and she was giving him everything she could do. She poured out this oil and this spikenard and she poured out these precious ointments on his feet. Again, Ephesians 4 that we read this morning, I suggest to you that we let all this bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from us with all malice and be kind one toward another. Amen. Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us, let's forgive each other and go on. And praise God and shout. You can't shout if you've got anger in your heart. Did you know you can't lift a holy hand in the church, which is a New Testament uh, uh, verse? You can't lift a holy hand in the house of God if you've got anger in your heart. It says without doubt and without wrath. I believe the Bible. Now, Judas was an extortioner. extortioner. He was a thief. He has his place in hell this morning. Mary has her place in heaven this morning. She wasn't worried. She wasn't concerned about taking from the body of Jesus. She was concerned about giving to the body of Jesus Christ. She proved her sincerity of her love. The best anger management class is to know Jesus died for you, that he died upon a cruel cross of Calvary, that you would not have to go to a devil's hell for the liars and the cheaters and the stealers and those angry people. Can you imagine being in hell in darkness with all those angry people forever in eternity? My friend, I have to put up with them on this planet. I sure don't want them to be with me throughout all of eternity. I'm going to a place 
where there's no more anger. I'm going to a place where there's no more sickness. There's no more sorrow. There's no more suffering. There's no more anger. Oh, I love the prospect of heaven. How about you? Heaven gets sweeter all the time to me. And, and you know, the closer I get, the longer I serve and the sweeter it grows. I got to sing that song in the shower this morning. I said, honey, call Brother Turner, call Sister Turner. We got another special supposed to be sung today at the church. I'm not kidding. <laughs> remember this, the more that we bless Jesus Christ, our Savior, and his body, remember the church is his body. The more blessed we'll be and our testimony will be for the perpetual generations like Mary. Every generation since Christ has known about what she gave to the Lord. What the Bible says. Do you believe it? Today, be a blessing to the local body of Jesus. Be a blessing to your church. Don't talk down your church. If I find you talking down this church, I'm coming to visit you in person. I haven't given 16 years of my life for somebody to run down the body of Jesus Christ and put another. Don't you think he's had enough stripes on his back already? Yes. Don't you think he's had enough th uh, thorns on his head already? Yes. Don't you think he's already been ridiculed, despised, and hated, and shamed above all men of the earth already? Why should he go through any more pain? We don't need to take from the Lord. We don't need to add any more hurt upon him. We need to give to the body of Christ. Let's ask God's blessings over the